In this lesson, we're going to talk about continuous probability distributions. We'll first begin by talking about a uniform distribution, and then we'll talk about the standard normal distribution. Before we begin with the uniform distribution, let's review a couple of terms. First off is the uh, term continuous. Remember that continuous can be any value within uh, a certain range of values, which compares to discrete. And remember, discrete was simply when we're counting things which would be typically a whole number. So continuous can be any value. The other thing we need to review when we're talking about a uniform distribution is the basic way that we compute the area of a rectangle. And you might remember that back in your geometry days to, to compute an area, the area of a rectangle, you just simply take the length times the width. And that's going to be very important as we're figuring out the probabilities within a uniform distribution. Uniform distribution means that every value between a and b, as you see in the rectangle, has an equal probability. Remember, we compute the area of the rectangle by uh, the length times the width here. The other thing to realize is that 100% or all possible outcomes are going to fit within that rectangle. So the next thing we're going to do after we have the length of a and b, we're going to figure out what the probability of any value in that continuous uniform distribution is going to be. And the probability is simply going to be 1 divided by b minus a. And that will make more sense as we go into some other slides and show you some examples here. So here we have an example of a uniform distribution. We're going to develop this example in, in, in some upcoming slides, but let's just show you very quickly how we uh, determine the probability for each possible outcome. So in this case, we have some wait times. And uh, as the example is going to show us here, it's the wait times that uh, students are waiting for a bus. And that wait time can be between 0 and 30 minutes. So we have, again, um, if we're looking at the probability, the way we're going to compute that is 1 divided by b minus a. So 30 minus 0 is 30. 1 divided by 30 is 0.333. And so for any minute here, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, the probability is uniform. So the probability of getting 10 minutes exactly is going to be 0.33. The probability of getting 20 minutes is going to be 0.33. Don't get hung up at all with the, uh, the yellow portion of this rectangle because remember, all of the possible occurrences are going to be showing and in, showing up in that uniform distribution. So if we take 30, 0 to 30, we multiply that by 0.333, we end up with 100%. So don't get hung up with the yellow stuff. Well, when we're working with uniform distributions, we're also going to be working with the mean and the standard deviation of a uniform distribution. And these formulas are actually very simple. Uh, if you take a look at the mean formula, the mean formula is simply a plus b divided by 2. And 2 is just a constant that we use in, uh, in computing the mean. The standard deviation, again, very similar. It is the square root of b minus a squared divided by 12. And again, 12 is just a constant that we use with the uniform distribution. All right, here we have an example of how we're actually going to use the uniform distribution. Uh, it's, it's the same rectangle that I in introduced in the, a couple of slides ago, but uh, we have a waiting time that is uniformly distributed between 0 and 30 minutes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show you how that uh, graphs out, which you've actually already seen that, but we'll do it again. Uh, we're going to prove to you that the uh, area under the uniform distribution is 1 or 100%. And then we're also going to find out what the mean would be by uh, answering the question, how long will a student typically have to wait, or what is the expected value? And we'll also talk about what's a standard deviation, and then we'll figure out what's the probability of a student waiting more than 25 minutes, and then between 10 and 20 minutes. OK, we don't need to spend a lot of time on this slide. We've already seen how this distribution is graphed out. Uh, the start time between uh, 0 and 30 minutes. So we would just draw a rectangle with the uh, one point being 0, the, the ending point being 30, the a and the b. And then, of course, we've already seen how to compute the probability. We take 1 divided by b minus a. You're already ahead of the game with uh, this slide as well. We wanted to show that the area under the distribution is 1. Well, we've already done that. We have the probability of 0.3333, and uh, we multiply that by 30, or as we see the formula down here at the bottom, uh, the answer is still 1. All right, now that uh, we've got that taken care of, we're going to go ahead and compute the mean, which would be the expected waiting time or the uh, typical waiting time. And you can see that the mean is very simple to compute with a uniform distribution. It's just the a plus b divided by 2. So in this case, 0 plus 30 divided by 2 equals 15. So on average, or the 
the expected waiting time would be 15 minutes. Standard deviation is almost just as simple. It's simply the square root of 30 minus 0 squared divided by 12, and we end up with a standard deviation of the uniform distribution of 8.66. Well, now we get to do some fun stuff here. So we want to answer the question, what is the probability that a student will wait more than 25 minutes? And so with the uniform distribution, if you look at the little rectangle down at the bottom, you can see that we're only looking at a certain area of the rectangle. We're looking at the area between 25 and 30. And that is actually 5 minutes, or 5 units. So if you look at the formula up there, uh, what we have is we have the probability of each minute of being 0.3333. We multiply that by 5, or... Um, as the example is showing us there, we take 1 divided by 30 minus 0 times 5. And so the probability of waiting 5 minutes is 0.1667. Well, once we've got that last part figured out, it's pretty easy to do this next question here. So what is the probability that a student will wait between 10 and 20 minutes? Well, again, the area is going to be 10 units. So we have 10 units times the probability of each unit, or in this case, 0.3333. Well, now we're switching gears a little bit. We uh, are going past the uniform distribution. We're talking about a normal distribution, which is uh, commonly called a bell curve. Now, in a perfectly normal symmetrical distribution, each half is identical, as this slide tells us. Also, in a perfectly normal distribution, the mean, the median, the mode are all equal. And in theory, uh, the tails never touch. Uh, they extend to infinity because there could always be somebody that has one higher value or one lower value. This slide just uh, lists out again the characteristics of a normal probability distribution. You read briefly about the empirical rule in a previous chapter, but let's go ahead and review what the empirical rule tells us. It tells us that within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean, we will find 68% of all the values. Within two plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean, we'll find 95%. And within three standard deviations of the mean, we'll find practically all, approximately 99.7%. Now, what we're going to be doing here in the next slide is we're going to be translating the empirical rule into something called the standard normal curve. So first off, here you see uh, basically the empirical rule given to us here, 68% falling between of the values falling between plus or minus one standard deviation and 95% falling between plus or minus two. However, when we're talking about standard deviation and means, it gets a little bit confusing. For instance, if our uh, mean was 95 and our standard deviation is 3, well, keeping track of the values, you know, if they've got a 97, how many standard deviations from the mean is that? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be converting the actual value that we get in relation to the mean. In other words, 97 compared to 95. And we're going to be converting that into how many standard deviations it is. And that'll be a standard normal curve. So it might be 1.2 standard deviations or 1.3. And there's a very simple formula that we're going to be using to do that. And then we're going to be using that value, <clears throat> the value of z, which is how many standard deviations it is from the mean. And then we're going to be able to find the probability associated with that. Now, I threw a lot of information at you here, but it'll make sense as we start going through these additional slides. All right, so the z value is going to tell us how many standard deviations the value that we're comparing to the mean deviates. In other words, 1.2, 1.5, 2, whatever it happens to be. And you can see that the formula here is very, very easy. To compute z, we're simply going to take x, which is the value that we have encountered. We're going to subtract mu, which is the population stand, uh, excuse me, the population mean, and we're going to divide that by the population standard deviation. So if we have those values, the population mean and the population standard deviation, we're going to compare the value that we got, and we're going to see how many standard deviations it is away from the actual mean. So here we see an example of how to compute a z-score. So with this example, the weekly incomes of uh, the individuals we're looking at, uh, the mean is 1,000 and the standard deviation is 100. Some nice even round numbers to work with there. So we want to find out 
what the z value is for an income uh, of a particular foreman that we looked at and let's assume that he earned eleven $1 hundred dollars per week so what would the z value be for that particular foreman so the x value looking at the formula up here at the top the x value that we encountered is eleven $1 hundred the population mean was a thousand and the population standard deviation was one hundred so running through that little formula we end up with a z score of exactly one Similarly, if we found a foreman who made $900, uh, in this case we would have a negative 1. That means it is one standard deviation lower than the mean, and of course the positive 1 would be one standard deviation higher than the mean. So the formula is simply is x minus mu divided by sigma, or standard deviation. After computing a z-score, the next thing we want to do is find out how much of the area uh, the the range, so to speak, between the 1,000 and the 1,100 actually takes up of the curve. We call that the probability. And remember that 100% uh, of uh, all of the possible values occur under this curve, but what's the probability of getting those values? And you can see, just looking at the little chart here, that it uh, takes up one standard deviation. And if you remember the empirical rule, remember that plus or minus one standard deviation was 68%, we probably have a good idea of what uh, the probability actually is. But let's go ahead and show you in the next slide how we could actually compute that or look it up in a table. Now your textbook is very likely going to have a, a normal distribution uh, table. Um, with the textbook that I'm particularly using with this class, it's actually found on the very, very back cover. It's also found in Appendix B1 in this particular textbook. But once you've found that table, uh, this is kind of what it looks like when you look at the slide here. You have a z value, and we computed exactly z equals 1.0. So we don't have to go over into the 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 columns. You know, If we had a z of 1.2 or 1.3, we would. But once we've got the 1.0, we notice that the probability is 0.3413. You multiply that by 2, and you end up with 68% or pretty close to that so plus or minus one standard deviation would give us 68% of the values. As you probably guessed you can also uh, use Excel to give you what the probability would be instead of having to look it up in the table and here you see an example of the Excel 2010 norm.dist function. We just pop in the values for x, the mean, and the standard deviation and we do have to put in the cumulative of 1 and when we do that that actually gives us a slightly different value and if you look down at the uh, the, the actual distribution the bell-shaped curve down at the bottom left you'll see that it does compute 0.84 that's because it's computing it all the way from essentially zero to the one standard deviation plus one. So you'd have to subtract 0.5 uh, from the answer that Excel gives you to actually get that probability. Now just for comparison's sake here, let's say that we computed a z of 1.5. Well, looking up 1.5 in the uh, normal probability table, we would end up with 0.332. All right, so here's another way to look at this. Let's go back to our uh, construction worker example with the foreman. So remember, we have a mean of 1,000 and a standard deviation of 100. So we're going to ask the question here, what is the probability of selecting a foreman at random oh, in the glass factory whose income is between 790 and 1,000? So in this case, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the z. So we have um, x minus mu, or 790 minus 1,000, divided by the standard deviation which is 100. So in this case, we end up with a negative 210. So if we were to look up minus 2.1 in the z, uh, z table, we would end up with 4821, as we see here in the chart below. This slide just confirms that uh, that is the indeed the value that we'll end up with, with uh, 2.20. The probability is 0.4861. All right, let's go a little further with that. So in this case, we're using that same example with the uh, the foreman in the glass factory. So we want to find out what is the probability or what is the area under the curve between 840 and 1200. Well, to do this, we're going to have to compute two different z values. The first one for 840, as you can see at the first part of the formula there, comes out to a negative 1.6 for the z score. The 1200 comes out to the exactly 2.0. So in this case, looking at the, uh, the, the bell shape curve that you see down at the bottom, we have between 1.6 negative and 2.0. So we would have to look up two z-scores and then we'll add them together. And we do that because we always know that each half 
of the curve is exactly 0.5. And this slide is just confirming that that is indeed the probabilities associated with the 1.6 and the 2.0 z-scores. All right, let's go a little further. This is a little harder example. We're taking those same individuals, but this time we want to know what is the probability or the area under the curve that falls between 1150 and 1250. So once again, we'll have to compute two z-scores, one for 1150 and one for 1250, and then we're going to have to look up the probabilities for each of those and then subtract one from the other. And we'll see that in the next slide. All right, so here we look up the two probabilities. Uh, the probability for 2.5 is 0.4938, as you can see in the chart there. The probability with a z-score of 1.5 is 0.4332. We subtract those together, and you see the formula and actually how it's done in the graph, and we end up with a probability of having between those two ranges of 0.0606. Here's an example of how we might actually use z in a real life business example. We're actually going to need to solve for two values. We're going to need to solve the z and also x. But let's go ahead and look at the example here. So a tire and rubber company uh, reveals that the mean mileage is 67.9 and the standard deviation is 2050. Again, very important values for uh, computing z scores. Well, what they want to do is they want to guarantee uh, that the mileage uh, is no more than 4% of the tires will have to be replaced. So they want to pick a value that 96% uh, that of the tires are going to last within. So what is the guaranteed mileage that Leighton should announce? Well, we'll go ahead and see how we solve that. So what we're really trying to solve here is x. You know, what is the x value or the value that we should guarantee so that no more than 4% of the tires will have to be replaced? So again, we have the population mean of 67.9, the standard deviation of 2050. So we'll have to use some basic algebra and see if we can solve that. But the first thing we're going to have to do is figure out what the z value is because that's the other thing that we need in order to solve for x. I'm going to take this a little bit slow here, and uh, you'll have to kind of use your imagination because some of the things I'm talking about are not going to be on this slide here. But remember that with each half of the curve, there is exactly 0.5. Now, what we're interested in is the very far left tail of 4%. 0.04. That means that between the tail, or the point that we're looking for, and the mean, there is going to be 0.46 or 46 percent of the area left. Whenever you look up a z value, the probability for that z is always from the mean, either left or right, depending on what direction that you're going for. So we need to solve for z, and the z that we're trying to find would be 0.46 or 46 percent. So if you look down in the chart, you can see the little blue circle there you'll see that that would equate to roughly 1.75. So that's the z we're looking for that would tell us that between a z of 1.75, that 46% or 0.46 would lie between the mean and that particular position. All right, once we've got the missing z value, then we're going to go ahead and be able to solve for x. And so if you just follow the logic there, um, you'll end up seeing that uh, the value that we're looking for for x is 64,312. And over to the right, you have a very simple way of looking at that formula. So x equals mu minus the standard dv, uh, the z times the standard deviation. And it's minus this time because we're going to the left. If we were going to go to the right or look for a higher value, then we would add uh, the z times the standard deviation. And if you hadn't guessed, yes, Excel is a wonderful tool, and uh, it would actually solve this problem for us very, very easily with the norm.inv in Excel 2010-2013. So once we have that function selected, we just put in the probability, put in the mean and the standard deviation, and you can see that it computes the same value for us.